message of the messenger, they said to him, listen, why don't you go do the war from the Kaaba first? And you know, then after that we'll discuss negotiations and whatnot. They were trying to respect him as a messenger. He said, I am not one that's gonna go and perform tawaf on the Kaaba before the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does it. Showing their love, their respect, their honor for their teacher, for their prophet. They would never put themselves before him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now when Uthman went in, it took some time. And a rumor started to spread outside that Uthman has been killed. And this is something, brothers, that's unacceptable for a man to be killed and he's a messenger. Messengers go in peace. They go to the Romans, they go to the Persians. They go all over. And their job is to communicate messages. Even in times of war, you don't harm the messengers. They go on behalf of what? The different empires and whatnot. So when they heard Uthman was killed, this is war now. Brothers, I want you to imagine, the companions didn't come to fight. They don't have armor, they don't have helmets. They were in ihram. They're wearing their two clothes, the cloak and the undergarment that you were all wearing. They don't have weapons, brothers, but now it's war. So the Prophet calls them for a pledge. He calls them for a pledge. And it's known as Bay'atul Iwan. The pledge what? The one of those who earn the pleasure of Allah. As Allah says, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ يُبَايِرُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Allah said, Allah is pleased. Muhammad were the ones who gave you the Pledge of Allegiance underneath the tree. So the companions came underneath the tree and they said, Ya Rasulullah, we'll give you the Pledge of Allegiance. Brothers, what was the Pledge for? The companions mentioned two things. Number one, the Pledge was so we don't turn back on our heels. We're going to fight and we're not going to retreat. And the second thing was the Pledge to die for the sake of Allah. We're going to die now. We didn't come to fight. Some may see this as a suicide mission, but that's it, we're going in now. We're going to go in now, to kill one of ours. We're going to kill one of ours, which is the time of peace. But nonetheless, it happened that Uthman wasn't killed, and he did come out safely. So a fight didn't have to take place. Now the negotiations is another incident. The Quraysh sent out a man to negotiate. His name is Urwa ibn Mas'ud. Urwa ibn Mas'ud was a man that used to go on behalf of the Quraysh to the Romans. He used to go to the Persians. He used to go to the what? The leader of Egypt. So he was a man that was known for uh, diplomacy and meeting people and he knew how to talk, he knew how to negotiate. So what? Brothers, I promise you're going to have time with the horses. Focus on reminding right now. You're going to have time with the horses. I promise you that, inshallah. <laughs> Listen to the companions, the story, the story of the companions. So Urwa comes out to negotiate with the Prophet ﷺ. So every time Urwa is speaking to the Prophet, he will grab the Prophet's beard. Like this. This is a custom of the Arabs. It was a way of softness and gentleness. But what? If I'm trying to get your heart, I'll grab your beard. And there was a soldier that was standing next to the Prophet ﷺ. He had a helmet on. And we can't see who he is. We can't see who he is, who he is. Every time Urwa grabs the Prophet's beard, he takes a sword and smacks it on the back of his hand. He reaches out to grab the Prophet's beard again, he takes his sword, the back of it, he smacks it on his hand. Because a filthy Muslim can't touch the blessed beard of the Prophet So Urwa gets annoyed. He says, who is this man? I can smack him on. So he lifts his helmet, he shows him. It's Mughira to the Shurba. Al Mughirat ibn Shurba is the nephew of this man. This is his uncle, brothers. This is his uncle. So, Urwa becomes confused. My own nephew. Slap him in my hand. And then he looks around at the companions. He says, there's not a time when the Prophet spits, except they grab his spit and they wipe it on their face. There's not a time when the Prophet's doing wudu, the water falls for him. They are almost about to kill each other to get the water that's fallen off his blessed body, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said when he speaks, they are quiet. He was amazed. I've never seen people like this around their leader. So he goes back into Mecca. He speaks to the Quraysh. He says, listen, I've been to the Romans. I've been to the Persians. I've been all over. Never have I seen a leader respected the way these people respect their leader. 
You try to tell them, listen, let them come in, do their umrah, then leave. It's not going to harm you. These lot are different. Are they ready to die? They're ready to die for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They didn't want to hear it. So they sent another man. Suhail ibn Amr, his name was. They said, Suhail is going to close the door for us and get rid of Muhammad. By the attention, Quraysh don't actually want to fight. Why? They become weak. I said, shave your head. And they did. They didn't disobey him. They just paused. They paused. We're going to go back with our fight. We signed this agreement. We've been humiliated. The Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did not do a second ago, Guru says the puppy doesn't spit except that they got a spit. He doesn't do the wu except they're about to kill each other to grab the water that's coming off his body. That's how they obeyed him. Now this is so hard for them. They both know.